Is the Philadelphia 76ers master plan coming together? We're diving into that on today's show. And isn't this a beautiful picture of the Sixers' new big three? Paul George, Joel Embiid coming off that great Olympic performance, by the way, against Serbia. And Tyrese Maxey, who's looking swole this offseason. Before we dive into all of that on a fascinating show here on 76ers Now, I need you to hit that subscribe button right here on the channel to help us out. But also, if you hit that sub button, you get free. Sixers coverage damn near every single day and year round. As you can see, since the calendar flipped to August, Bulls report 110 new subscribers. We had a monster July. Let's pick it up here in August a little bit. 63 new subscribers since August 1st. So hit that subscribe button right now if you're looking for informative, insightful, entertaining, thought-provoking Sixers coverage right here on YouTube. And with that, we'll show you what we bring to the table on this show, which starts right now. I'm Chase Senior. This is Philadelphia 76ers now by Chat Sports. No matter where you are, how you're tuned in, I appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. Producer Chip making the whole thing operate on the ones and twos. And as I started off the show with that question, is the Sixers master plan coming together? I think that Daryl Morey has taken a masterful approach this offseason. And let's run through all of this here. So the Sixers master plan. We heard Daryl Morey talk about it after the Sixers got bounced in the first round by the New York Knicks. He wanted a third star. Daryl Morey has this theory of putting together as many stars on a team as possible. He wanted a wing who could shoot and defend in the playoffs. He was able to accomplish all of that by signing Paul George and giving him a max contract. PG, as we talked about, as Ramona Shelburne reported, was always on the Sixers' radar. This goes back a season or two ago when the Sixers were looking ahead to this offseason and putting their ducks in a row to try and pursue Paul George. And they were able to land their big fish and their big ticket free agent. The perfect big three. Is this it? The Sixers have needed a star wing for years. Tobias Harris clearly wasn't that. The NBA is a wings league. Maxi Embiid PG. It's really the perfect pairing of all these skill sets meshing together. And I really do believe that Joel Embiid's Olympic experience, his role, making sacrifices, having to get comfortable on a team with star power, overcoming adversity, struggling a little bit, playing well, playing with superstars, going to do wonders for him looking ahead to this year, playing with Tyrese Maxey and Paul George. Now, is this the NBA's best trio? We don't know right now because we want to see these pieces on the floor together, but could they become that during the 2024-2025 season? I think so. This would have been the highest scoring big three in the NBA last year. Joel Embiid, 34.7 points per game. Tyrese Maxey at nearly 26. Paul George at 22 and a half. He's already had to make sacrifices playing with star power. So he's used to this. That's why I'm confident that this trio can fit together. You look at the efficiency with their field goal numbers and from downtown, this is why it's so exciting to be a Sixers fan right now and why we're the most excited we've been as a fan base in a really long time. And then lastly, as I bring on producer Chip, Chip, you need the star power to compete with Boston. Now, they're really good at the wing. You got better at the wing. You can add a little bit more size, I think, but at least you have the star power to compete with the defending champion Celtics. And saying that makes me sick. <laughs> Yeah, look, unfortunately, the Celtics, that's the bar that's being set right now. That's the team that you're going to have to beat in the East. The Knicks are dangerous, of course, as well. But you look at the Celtics and how star-studded they are, just top to bottom. I mean, they had three Olympians, could have had four. Yeah. you got to be able to compete and bring in a star player like Paul George at that wing position. It's clear Daryl Morey knew to compete with these guys. We can't just fill out this roster with a bunch of solid role players. Because that was an option for the Sixers heading into free agency. If they didn't get Paul George, we talked about it. Can they go get, you know, some good pieces like a Contavious, Caldwell Pope, some smaller pieces? But no, Daryl Morey said, you know, to compete with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Derek White, Chris Depps Porzingis, all these guys the Celtics got, we need the stars. And he went out 
and did it. And that's just the first part of the plan, but Daryl Morey did a great job in being able to pull Paul George away from LA and landing him here. And now the Sixers got that big three as the foundation. Can they compete with Boston? We will find out. Can't wait for the season to get here. By the way, Celtic Sixers will be playing on Christmas Day. That news announced on Thursday night. Step number two of the 76ers master plan. And coming up, we're going to talk about a potential move that the Sixers could make. But for now, Philadelphia gave out a max contract to Paul George. They signed Tyrese Maxey to his max deal. Of course, Joel Embiid already playing on a max contract. So it was pivotal. It was vital. It was important considering the cash and financial situation for the Sixers to find value in free agency. The challenge with big threes, being able to fill out the roster. That's why we've seen a little bit of a philosophical shift from other teams in the NBA who when the Miami Heat with LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh had their big three, that became the model. But then other teams started to win without a big three, and their depth helped them. So depth is really important, but I do think the Sixers did a very good job of finding value. Signing Caleb Martin to an $8.1 million deal, average annual value. Kelly Oubre, $7.9 million. So you get some size athleticism at the wing and forward spots there. You finally have a legitimate backup behind Joel Embiid as the Sixers brought back Andre Drummond, who I thought was great behind Embiid a couple of years ago before he was shipped away in that Ben Simmons, James Harden trade. Eric Gordon on a vet men. Reggie Jackson on a vet men. Kyle Lowry on a vet mint to get Gordon Jackson Lowry on the vet mins and then the players to the left at very affordable rates that's Daryl Morey working his magic that's Daryl Morey flexing his muscles because there is an importance of having role players for Nick Nurse to use at his disposal as part of the Sixers rotation and we've seen the past few years how important role players are because the Sixers have lacked those players now I think they have them keep in mind Ricky Council also on this team and Daryl Morey signed him to an affordable deal last year where if he ends up being a good player that could be a great value deal for the Sixers here Chip. Yeah, look, we've seen with teams that have made deep runs and won NBA championships, these other guys are so important because all the teams that make these runs have stars. Yep. And you know and you hope that your top guys perform at their highest capabilities. But when you have other guys surrounding guys that can step up in the big moments, look at the Mavericks, right? A Derek Jones Jr., a P.J. Washington, right? Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford stepping up in big-time moments, like... You need those other guys that are going to be able to do the dirty work and provide and step up when the other guys aren't, you know, at their highest level. And we haven't seen that with the Sixers. It's always if Embiid's not dominating the game, then there's really not much that they can do. Obviously, Tyrese Maxey this past season stepped up and won the Sixers a game with his dominant performance. But now you have other guys, Kayla Martin, who has shown to be a very good playoff performer. You have a reliable backup big man now in Andre Drummond. You hope Kelly Oubre can continue his good play from last year. So I feel a lot more confident, especially with the veterans that are coming off the bench as well, and Eric Gordon, Kyle Lowry, Reggie Jackson, that the Sixers at least have a better surrounding core to take into the postseason. Still more to get to here on today's 76ers now as this master plan is coming together. And as I teased a little while ago, could this lead to another move that the Sixers could make as part of this plan? Sixers do have two roster spots left. They want to keep one open. Daryl Morey said that during the Paul George introductory press conference, and the team has been linked to players like Marcus Morris and Davis Bertans, who could be affordable. So with that, I ask you this. Pick one player to sign here, because you can only pick one, according to Daryl Morey, and unless his stance has changed. MM for Marcus Morris, physicality, Shoots the three, a lot of experience, gives you size, or Davis Bertans, more of a shooter, type DB. The final piece, could we see one more big trade for the Sixers? That's coming up just around the corner, but first, today's 76ers now is made possible thanks to our friends at Game Time, an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, the NBA, and the NFL. It makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down lower 
the closer it gets to first pitch or tip-off or kickoff. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets, NBA, NFL tickets, but also they have tickets for concerts, comedy shows, theater events. I love their flash deals because you can save even more with their exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. The all-in pricing is an awesome tool because you can toggle this feature showing the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And how often do you go on a ticketing app? You get hit with those outrageous fees at checkout and you're like, hold on, this is not the price I thought I was getting doesn't happen with game time. You want to go to a Philadelphia Eagles game, a Philadelphia Phillies game, you can see the view from your seats as you can see right here. Tickets as low as $61 for a preseason tilt between the Eagles and the Vikings, or you can look down at the stadium to get a different vantage point of where you can sit. You see some of the fire kind of emojis. Those are some of the hot deals. Philadelphia Phillies going to return home after taking on the Diamondbacks after this long West Coast roadie to take on the Miami Marlins. That's a hot ticket in town. And what's also hot, I'm fired up about this. You can get $20 off when you use the code chat sports. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the app, create an account, use the code chat sports. You get $20 off your first purchase. Terms uh, apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. All that information down below in the comment section and in the description of today's show. 76ers master plan step number three. The Sixers did bring back KJ Martin. A lot of people were surprised by the deal that he got. Was this Daryl Morey again flexing his muscles, looking ahead into the future, having some foresight here because any good business has to look ahead and plan ahead and he understands that he can use KJ Martin as a trade chip. Now, he signed that two-year contract, 2025-2026, is non-guaranteed. That's important for Philadelphia if they keep him. It's important for another acquiring team if you need to use K.J. Martin to match some salaries. Now, in 2024-2025, he's due $7.9 million. The year after that, $8 million. Daryl Morey knows what he's doing. And by giving K.J. Martin a larger deal, the Sixers can use that money to match higher salaries at the trade deadline for an upgrade. There's always a way to beat the system. This is kind of a way to beat the system. And you think about some 76ers trade targets here. This week, we talked about Nas Reed. Forward, center, shoots the three, puts the ball on the floor. Positional versatility. He can defend. Good athlete. Great production last year. Shot more than 40% from three. What a fit he would be alongside Joel Embiid. He was awesome for the T-Wolves en route to that Western Conference Finals appearance. Bobby Portis, another player. Dorian Finney-Smith, one of my dream trade targets here. Can hit that corner three. He can defend multiple positions. Gritty, tough. Tari Eason. A young player who the Sixers could look into. Simone Fonteccio probably butchered that name. Hopefully the Sixers don't butcher a trade. A forward with Detroit. So Daryl Morey's plan here starting to come together. And now, as Philadelphia put out that social media video the other day, we're going to do everything that we can to make a deep run and try to win a championship. That's all that talk. Now it's time to cash in, get the job done, get past the damn second round for the first time since 2001. That in and of itself will be worthy of a big celebration among us Sixers fans. That's how low the bar is, but now the expectations are high when you sign a player like Paul George and you have a team like you do with the coach that you do, with the front office executive that you do leading the charge and Daryl Morey. So what's your confidence level in Daryl Morey here? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. Sound off with what you think. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time here on 76ers Now.